This is my official review of the Nikon D850 45.7 megapixel digital SLR. You ready? Let's rock and roll. What's good guys? This is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. Welcome to a very special review. This right here is the Nikon D850 DSLR. I've owned this camera for a couple of years now. I didn't buy it right at launch. This camera launched in 2017. I bought it right around 2019. The reason why I waited a couple of years, number one, I was happy with my DSLRs at the time, and I still am. I had a D4, a D800, which I still use to this day. And also I wanted to wait let the hype die down and just see if there was any problems with the launch of this camera and get, and get a later copy of the D850. And let me tell you right now, it's been a joy to work with. This camera has a whopping 45.7 megapixel BSI backside illuminated sensor. It's got an XSpeed 5 image processor you need a fast processor to process all that data. We're talking almost 46 megapixels of goodness. And to process that type of information, dynamic range is amazing on this camera. This camera has a native ISO of low end 64 ISO all the way to 25,600 ISO on the high end. Now that's native. Even when you're doing video, with the D850, it does 64 ISO. Even my Z6 doesn't do 64 ISO. It does seven frames per second standard continuous shooting, and it also does nine frames per second if you upgrade to the battery grip, the NBD18 battery grip, and you get the NL18 battery, the same battery that you use on a D4, D5. You get that battery, with that battery grip, you can do nine frames per second. Video side, I'll go through all the video features as well, but let's talk about photography. Now, 45.7 megapixel, like I said, XP5 image processing power. The ISO range is spectacular. It does really good in low light situations. And remember guys, you're delivering 46 whopping megapixels from this digital SLR. Let's talk about storage media. It has an XQD card slot and an SD card slot. Now, would I like it to be identical card slots? Sure, of course. Maybe two XQD card slots would have been awesome. I love XQD. The performance of that card has been spectacular. It has a 3.2 inch touchscreen tilting TFT LCD. And I use the D850 in broad daylight outside and it really does a good job on location when you're shooting outdoors in bright sunlight. And that tilty screen is awesome. Yeah, it doesn't retract all the way around so you could see yourself, but who wants that in a professional DSLR anyway? This is a pro camera for truly professional photographers. I'm happy with the tilt screen. This is great if you're doing low shots and if you're, let's say you're capturing the dance floor and you're shooting, you know, holding the camera up above, you can tilt the screen a little down, see what you're doing, compose your shot. All right, let's talk file types. It does raw files, 12 and 14 bit, small, medium and large raw files. You're talking if all the way at full power, full megapixels, 8,256 by 5,504. Okay, let's talk about autofocus in the D850. The D850 has 153 focus points with 99 cross type sensors with a dedicated AF processor. This camera does not have a built-in AA filter, which is good. My D800 has an AA filter, anti-aliasing filter. This one does not. Build quality is just spectacular. It's weather sealed. It's built very, very well. You can shoot with confidence like Nikon says. <laughs> yes, it is built well. It's built to withstand 
any type of condition, well, almost any type of condition. Of course, it has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth built in. Now, as far as video goes, it does 4K 30, 4K 25, 24. It uses the full frame sensor when recording in 4K. And it does your standard HD 1080, you know, 720. It has slow motion, just like my Z6. 120 frames per second, 1080p. Now, as an owner of a D800, the first series of the 800 cameras that Nikon introduced, I can tell you right off the bat what the major changes are with this camera versus the D800. Obviously, number one is the higher megapixel, the image processor. 45.7 megapixels versus the D800. The D800 has 36 megapixels. It's got a BSI sensor, and obviously the video features are much better than the D800. And you're talking about a camera that came out in 2017 versus 2012. So this camera packs a punch. This camera is has won many awards in the photography community, and it's regarded as one of the best DSLRs ever produced till this day. The D850 is some serious, serious camera. You're talking flagship, you're talking top of the line, you're talking everything in, on, in a DSLR that you can ask for. Actually, let me take that back. I can ask for a few things that I would like improved, <laughs> you know, video features for that matter. However, like I said, and I always said this, this is not a video camera. This is, it does video, sure. It does a good job video, minus the autofocus performance. But as far as still photography is concerned, this thing is the ultimate. It is a beast. And I think personally, it's probably one of the best DSLRs Nikon has made till this day. I mean, yeah, the D6, the D5, obviously those are that's a workhorse, powerhouse, professional body DSLR. But this camera packs the resolution power it does 4k and 8k time lapse as far as battery life is concerned on a standard battery the nikon can shoot up to 600 more images than the previous d810 could on one battery charge now going back to what i was saying as far as what photographers think of this camera uh, professional photographers that have used the d850 a lot of praise a lot of praise I've had it for two years and you know I love this camera. It's it's been with me and it delivers just results day in and day out. Now the file size the file sizes are, are pretty big. Now we're talking about uncompressed raw, you're at 80 or 90 megabytes a file. You compress the raw file, you're at about 45. You're still high, 45 megabytes a file. What's cool is like I said, it does small medium and large raw files, something the D800 does not do. And it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity with Nikon SnapBridge. You can transfer files. You can control the camera with a smartphone. It has all that connectivity built into this camera. Now, some of the changes versus a D800 that I saw right off the bat, the ISO button has changed. There's a dedicated ISO button right next to the trigger right here, which is really, really convenient. Finally, on the D800, you had the ISO button on the left side here. Now you have it next to the trigger by the record button. And as far as the, the grip goes, it feels really solid in the hand. I cannot complain as far as the grip. It feels really good. It feels actually better than the D800. You know, it... it the grooves here where your fingers go, it's much deeper and you get a better grip on it. Obviously, I have the dedicated uh, battery grip that's sold separately, the MBD18, which is sold, like I said, separately at a price tag of about $400. So this grip is pretty pricey, but the grip is built well, you know, so it, it feels solid. I do a lot of portraits, so I, it's a must have do a lot of vertical shooting. So this thing is a must have for me. About battery grips, guys, I choose Nikon because they're built well. They're just built for this camera. Yeah, sure, I can spend half the price and buy an, a knockoff, but they're cheaply made. They're, they're, you know, they don't work well sometimes. 
I just want, if I'm going to spend $3,000 on a camera, then if I'm going to buy the grip, which I'm a portrait shooter and a wedding photographer, so I would need that battery grip. You know, I need that battery grip because when I do portraits, you know, I hate doing this with my elbow sticking out. So it's much better. It's got a really nice grip. It's $400, by the way. As far as the connectivity goes on the side here, we got a mic, your mic, your standard mic input on the side, headphone jack, you got your USB connectivity and an HDMI port right here, mini HDMI port on the side here. They're all weather sealed covers, so they all feel great. And this camera does have uh, illuminated buttons. Yes, finally, this camera has illuminated buttons just like my D4 does. With the, flip of, with the flip of a switch, the buttons light up, the main buttons, and you can see what you're doing at night. Now let's see what the shutter sounds like versus my D800. And uh, let's go ahead and take a shot. I'll hold it close to the mic. It's got a deeper tone to the shutter and versus that camera, but yeah. As far as seven frames per second, I don't have the 18 battery housing. I have the regular battery that goes into the grip. So you're not gonna get seven frames per second. Here, you're not gonna get nine frames per second, you're gonna get seven. You would need that, you would need this, the, the vertical grip and that battery. So let's try and see seven frames per second. If I'm doing sports photography, I would go ahead and buy a D5 or a D6. This guy right here, uh, yeah, I would have as a second camera out in the field if I'm a sports shooter. But I would mainly use a D5 or D6 just because of the speed of that camera uh, when you're shooting action. You want the higher resolution, you know. And like I said, I'm okay with seven frames per second. You know, I don't spray and pray. I don't do any of that. You know, yeah, if you're a wildlife photographer, this camera is excellent. However, if I was a full-time wildlife photographer, I would also have a D500 because that camera is super, super fast. And it's it's regarded as one of the best wildlife, you know, uh, cameras out there from Nikon. So, but I would also have this because if you want that extra resolution, full frame, there's nothing like it. It's the highest megapixel Nikon DSLR to date. It's 2021 and you know, this came out in 2017 and it still sells for $3,000. A brief history about the Nikon D800 series of cameras. Nikon introduced the D800 back in 2012 and shortly thereafter, they released the D800E which they got rid of the AA anti-aliasing filter. And then soon after, the D810 was released. The D850 is the D810's predecessor. There wasn't a big difference between the D810 and the D800s. However, the D850, big time improvements, big time upgrade, a totally different camera packing a brand new industry first BSI sensor, 45.7 megapixels. This camera has a tilting TFT touch sensitive LCD with a 2.3 million dot 3.2 inch screen. The camera weighs in at 32.3 ounces, which is about 915 grams. And one thing I cannot get over about DSLRs are their beautiful OVFs. This thing has an eye-level pentaprism single lens reflex viewfinder. The D850 is equipped with a few function buttons that can be fully customizable and a very convenient joystick that lets you change focus points and a few other customizable features. All right, let me show you a little what the menu system looks like on the D850. So here we go. You got your, it's a basic Nikon menu system. And as you can see, uh, it's a touch screen. So you can pretty much select uh, your menu options here by touching 
the screen as well scrolls here up and down buttons feel good the buttons feel nice and responsive it's got a menu joystick here on the side here and it has also has one the grip has one so this is the da50 right here without the vertical grip let me show you some video clips i shot with the d850 here is some footage I shot for my channel using a portrait lens and this camera, 4K recording at 30. And on these next series of clips, I'm going to be using the 1424G with the D850. Here's a nice wide shot. Like I said, if you're doing static shots and you don't need autofocus, it works flawlessly. The video looks beautiful, as you can see right here. And the color matches very well with a mirrorless camera. So if you're doing B-roll with a Z6 or a Z7 and a D850, you do a good job matching color. And right here with the 1424, shooting some clips outdoors. This camera does not have IBIS. It's handheld. So I'm hand-holding this using the 1424, doing some video clips right here for you guys to see in this review. Okay, next up, sample images. So what I thought was, instead of showing you random images I took over the two years I've had this camera, let me show you a series of sample images from one wedding. Let's start off with the portrait of the lovely bride here. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see how clean it is. I believe I'm shooting this at ISO 1000. Look how sharp and clean. I'm loving the skin tone this camera produces. Very little editing here. I adjusted the exposure just a tad, but the colors and the white balance is same. I didn't touch anything straight from my camera. Here's an example of just how clean it is. Right here, I'm at ISO 2000 shooting the reception. I'm gonna zoom into the singer's eyes so you can see just how crisp and clean that is. I'm loving the colors of this camera. Just the balance, the skin tones, and look at that, I'm at ISO 1600 right here. Let's zoom into my Lightroom profile and see that I'm at ISO 1600 shooting full res file raw. The reason why I'm showing you these type of shots is because these are real world shots. You know, I could have showed you polished images, you know, portfolio shots, but these type of shots right here, your everyday wedding reception. Now here's an example of that purple stage DJ light that we all hate. This camera does a good job in rendering those type of colors. Overall, this BSI sensor is just simply amazing. I wish my D800 had that sensor. And you can pretty much tell with the extra resolution you get from this monster sensor, everything has just so much detail. Here's my buddy, Varuj, a videographer. He's using the Sony. <laughs> Here's my other buddy, Ed, with his Sony. Wow, what is that, a Zeiss lens? I'm gonna zoom in, look at the detail. And here is another example of how powerful this sensor is. I'm gonna zoom in here, look at the writing behind that Sony camera. You can see every little word. I'm gonna zoom in right there. Look, you could read that right away. Well, there's my second photographer, Armand. I'm sure you've met him in my previous videos. Here's an example of an underexposed image. We're gonna bring it up in Lightroom. And then I'm gonna show you the image right here. And I'm gonna zoom into the image. I'm at ISO 1250. And I want you to see how much detail this camera preserves when bringing it up. Overall, I had a great time using the D850 at this wedding. So to conclude guys, my D850 review in 2021, this camera has been excellent to me. The two years I've owned it, I'm a wedding photographer, I'm a portrait photographer. You know, I dabble in all types of photography and it's been there for me if I want that excellent qual image quality that the best image quality that nikon produces to date and i want to use my f mount glass which i own many i am going to pull out this camera right here for me it's worth every penny three thousand dollars if you can buy one brand new go for it you know dslrs it's looking like I don't know yet, but it's looking like DSLRs. This will probably be one of the final amazing DSLRs Nikon will ever produce, it looks like. Now there's a rumor going around that, you know, the predecessor is coming out to the D850, just called the D880. I haven't heard anything about that yet. And it's just a rumor till this day. 
And if it does come out, um, it's a welcome sight because I would love to see the DSLR just keep going and going. You know, we, I want new models. I want this, the, the F-mount glass to live as long as possible. Not only because I own many of them, because I just love the look of F-mount glass. I have many lenses and I just, if in a perfect world, we would have the DSLR continue and innovations of a mirrorless camera as well which we are gonna have soon with the Z9 and so on. Now, as far as if you're a beginner photographer, will I recommend this camera to you? Probably not because I think it's a little bit too much to start. You know, like I said, ultimate pros use this camera. You know, paid professionals use this camera. Sure, I'd recommend you the best, latest and greatest if you can get it. But if you're a beginner photographer, I recommend you guys start a little smaller, maybe a D6, hundred or d750 d780 and something like that if you want full frame that is now as far as recommending this camera to professionals sure yeah yes i definitely recommend this camera wedding photographers portrait photographers landscape real estate pretty much any genre of photography whatever you're shooting this camera we will deliver as far as video goes if you're doing primarily video and you're relying on an autofocus system this would not be the way to go if i was a videographer and i was doing you know static manual shots i might consider this and if i was doing like if i was a hybrid videographer doing a little bit of photography and a little bit of video on the side sure if you're not reliant on the autofocus system of this camera go for it it's a good video camera like i said it does a standard 4k video it uses the whole sensor to do 4k at 30 frames per second 25 24 does your standard hd as well and it's got slow motion built in so it's pretty nice so the nikon d850 let me comment down below all you Nikon D850 shooters out there. You own this camera. Let me know what you think of this camera. Let me know how it's been treating you over the years. It's only been four years since it's out. Are you looking forward to a predecessor? Will there be a predecessor? Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you're planning on getting this one and let me know your thoughts on the Nikon D850. This is your first time on Vahography. I welcome you to subscribe to this channel. This is where we talk all things photography, camera reviews, lens reviews. We talk photography, we talk shop, photography tutorials, the business side of photography. I even do photography confessions. <laughs> it's pretty fun, guys. So like and subscribe, like this video, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I upload new videos. All right, and finally, guys, I wanna thank you for watching my review of the Nikon D850 in 2021. Two years after ownership, four years after launch. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll catch you on a future video. This is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. And we'll see you very soon. Rock those images. Rock and roll.